We're still in the quest to find the best max cushion training shoe for you. And the contender that we have finally beaten up is the Brooks Ghost Max. Did it win or did it go down in the beach? Stay right here because I'm gonna bring you my final recommendations on this shoe. Well, if you're tuning in and you have not seen the full length video, right here there's a card that will take you to the full length video. Then at the end of that will be a link right back here to this video. Make sure you go watch that video first and promise me though, you will come back and you watch this one to see what my final thoughts on the Brooks Ghost Max is. Well, after finally wearing out this shoe, which took a little longer than normal because I did come up with a foot injury after St. Anthony's Triathlon, so it took all summer for me to get any kind of mileage on this shoe after my foot was completely healed. Now, the upper condition on this shoe was really, really great. This thing didn't wear, didn't show anywhere at all. It held its structure very, very well, and it held its color with absolutely no problems whatsoever kind of repelled all the muddy water you kind of looked to it and kept a good look the whole time as far as comfort goes the only problem i had with these shoes is right here if you look you'll see there's a couple of indentations right here by the toe push off those little indentations would kind of stick into my toes for the first couple of steps each and every time i ran after about 100 miles for about 10 steps you could feel them and then it kind of went away it was no big deal other than that this is one of the more comfortable shoes that i've worn they fit well this is a wide shoe which they were available in wide that's a big plus for them so i did find them to be really really good as far as the comfort went the cushioning stayed you'll see there's no there's no wrinkling along the edge of this whatsoever which is usually an indication of the foam breakdown this didn't have much foam breakdown, but I have to say that the foam itself, and the shoe itself was heavy. It was stronger, but with stronger comes weight. The shoe did run quite heavy. The inside of the shoe, the inner, all has absolutely nowhere, nowhere at the back, nowhere at the, at the sides. Nowhere did I get any hot spots out of the shoe whatsoever when I was running it. And the uh, insoles, stayed in place never moved around didn't shrink didn't do anything that was not unexpected as far as the quality of this shoe goes this shoe is a very high quality shoe just like most all of the brooks shoes are but i was really hoping that this shoe would be something different because it felt so good and it ran so good i figured i might have finally found the trainer that i was going to stick with until i looked at the bottom thought they were pretty blue got extra points for that as time went on, the wear on the bottom of these shoes was quite heavy. This shoe only has 201 miles on it. And if you look right here, you see where it's worn all the way through. As I wore through this, the back of the shoe became a little bit more uh, rocky into the foam. But other than that, this shoe really did hold up well. Uh, the push off right here, it got a little wear through on the push off after only 200 miles. Some people like to get six, 700 miles out of a pair of shoe. I got 200 out of these. I shoot for 250, 300 would be, a, would be a miracle shoe. I've only done that with one pair of shoes. Now, let's take a look at the contenders in our battle to see where they stood versus where this shoe stood. The Diodora Vigore, $111, 51 cents a mile. Uh, Asics Gel Nimbus, $160.51 a mile. I was able to find the Gel Nimbus at $106, which makes it $0.34 cents a mile. That's one of the best. Oka Clifton Edge, $0.85 cents a mile. The New Balance, $8.40, $0.54 cents a mile. And the On Cloud Monster, $1.34 a mile. They're out of the battle. This shoe here, it cost me $149 which means I've got 74 cents a mile out of it, but I looked at it on Amazon. There'll be a link in the description below to pick these up, $99, giving them 50 cents per mile. Would I buy these again? I might. They did really run well into water. They had a really good grip. I might use them as a, a wet shoe. Again, would I buy a shoe I only got 200 miles out of? I don't know. My recommendation on these shoes are they're a very good value 
for what we're doing. If you're a lighter runner, you might work your way up to recommendations. So the next shoe that we're taking a look at is, is the Sagley Race 4, or is it 5? You'll have to check out the video. It's the newest one. It's posted right here. Till then, there'll be a link back to the shoe to watch the video on this one. Make sure you subscribe, hype this up if you really like it. And if you want to help the channel grow, hit me with a super thanks right there. This is Coach John, Brooks Goes Max. Boom.